All right, recording. What's up, y'all? How are we doing, Stronger Life crew? Dustin Jones here. Got a good one today. Raise your hand if you're sore from the kettlebell swings. Yeah, a little bit. Usually, kind of backside, hamstrings, you'll feel it from those kettlebell swings. That was a really good workout yesterday. Today, uh, we are going to be working on building strength with the squat. And then we have five rounds for time of three different exercises, burpees, four burpees, six thrusters, and then 12 mountain climbers. Um, so five rounds for time. We typically don't do uh, that type of workout to where you try and get through something as fast as possible, um, and then you're done, uh, just for the sake of everyone trying to work out together. Uh, but we'll make sure we have some good options to where we're not finishing too far apart. Um, so that, that'll be good though. Five rounds for time will be that second piece. So equipment wise, what you need is something that you're going to be goblet squatting. So we want this to be a pretty heavy weight. Uh, so whether dumbbells, kettlebells, stock pot that you can progressively load up. Um, and then you'll probably want a lighter weight with the thrusters. So the thruster, remember, is where you're squatting down. And as soon as you come up, you're pressing something overhead. So uh, whether you know, it's a couple kettlebells or dumbbells, um, those will do the trick there. All right. Good deal. Okay, let's start with some marching. Just loosen up the hips, the legs a little bit. So we'll just march in place. Knees going straight up, at least to the level of your hips. Good. All right. Now let's have your knees going out to the side. Okay, now kick your butt. So I'm trying to kick my butt with my heel. Okay, and now I'm going to do uh, kind of up and overs or fire hydrants, some people call it that, where I'm going to take my, pretend like I'm trying to make a big circle with my knee. And then up and over and then back. Or you could pretend like you're trying to get your foot up and over a hurdle that's right beside you. And you can use your hands to keep you balanced. All right, let's do the other side. Let's do about 10 up and overs. Two, three, Let's do five. Okay, that's five. All right, now let's do some side steps. All right, I've got a little path here. I'm gonna keep facing this direction. Um, try and go quick if you're able, or uh, you can just do one step at a time. But I'm gonna try and almost do like a shuffle. My feet aren't crossing. I'm just going side to side. Let's go down and back three times, whatever that length is for you in your room. All right, good. Let's go back to marching. We'll run through that real quick. So high knees, knees are coming up to the level of your hips. Now knees to the side. Okay, and then do the up and overs. Five on each side. And then switch it. Five on the other side. Okay, and then the side steps. So down and back three times. Okay, good work. 
Becky, if you're with us, I, you don't have your video on. It's okay if you don't, but just want to let you know in case you want that on. So I can see it squatting. All right, let's find a door frame. Door frame. Very great to help warm up the squat. All right, so I'm going to be holding on. I have a wide squat stance. Uh, when I say wide, it means it's probably a little bit outside of my shoulders. My toes are pointed out uh, just about 15, 20 degrees. That's usually a good a stance for a lot of people. You can go wider if you want. The big thing you have to focus on is that your knees are tracking over your toes. Okay, knees are tracking over your toes. And the wider your stance is, uh, the more challenging that can be. There's kind of a sweet spot that may be different for every person, but that's what you wanna be thinking about. So I've got my squat stance. I'm gonna pretend like I'm sitting back down into a chair but I'm continuing to look right at this door frame. So I'm not pitching forward and looking straight down. So let's do five of these nice and controlled and using your hands to support yourself. Two, three, four, and five. All right, shake it out. In terms of depth, you want your hips to get at least to the level of your knees or a little bit below. So really try and go deep for this one. Let's do five more. Now just hold on with one hand instead of two. Four, five, all right. All right, come away from the door frame. Now we're gonna do some air squats. Remember you can prop your heels as well uh, if you want to, like on a thicker rug. For me, that would be something like this. Remember the more propped your heels are, for a lot of people, that can make the squat a lot easier. So we're gonna do five air squats like we did yesterday. Remember as you go down, you're bringing your hands forward. So as I'm going down, hands forward and when I come up, my hands are at my side. Now pick a point in front of you so you keep your gaze forward and keep your trunk more upright. All right, let's do five air squats. Try and get as low as you're able. Let's do five of these. Good. All right, now if you have a weight, a lighter weight, let's go ahead and start to add some load to this. So I'm gonna grab this kettlebell. It's a dumbbell, kettlebell, whatever you have. And we're going to put the weight in that goblet position underneath your chin. All right, Becky can't hear anything. Kim G, thumbs up if you can hear me. Yep. All right, I think it's on your end, Becky. Can hear me. All right, so let's get this weight. Remember, whenever we're in the goblet position and you have a weight when it's lighter, it's not too big of a deal, but as it gets heavier, you don't want your elbows out like this. This is gonna be much harder versus when you have your elbows underneath the weight, you're in a much stronger position. So get that same squat stance, look in front of you, and you're trying to sit down into a chair as deep as you're able to go, all right? Five times. And then go ahead and put the weight down. All right. Yeah, that's good, Ken. That's a lot deeper. Okay. I feel like the squat's pretty warmed up here. I'm gonna get my options because we're doing five sets of five and we're going to want to increase that load to get pretty heavy. Especially on that last set, it's gonna be heavy and we're gonna go as many reps as possible. 
All right, so one more thing to cover before we get into this is whenever you get to heavier loads, it can be tough to get that weight up into that position. So we really have to leverage our legs to help get that weight up, especially with a kettlebell like this. This is a 70 pound uh, kettlebell. I can't really just lift it just with my arms. I have to use my legs. And so that's where we may use something like our deadlift movement uh, to help get that up. So it looked like this. I kind of set up for the deadlift. I'm going to grab the weight. I'm going to come up quickly. And as I come up, I'll be able to get uh, the weight underneath my chin. So it'll look like this. Come up quick and then get it up to here. All right, if you have a stock pot, it could work relatively similar. Um, but that's how you want to get some of those heavier weights up to that position. You want to make sure you use your legs. All right, let me get a timer. Five sets of five. Let's do one minute, 15 seconds each round. Give us a good bit of, a little bit of rest. So every one minute, 15 seconds, we're going for five rounds. Five reps each time, trying to go up and load. Um, so start off at kind of a moderate weight for this first set and try and go up uh, each one. And then the fifth set's gonna be max reps. All right. All right, first set. Gonna start in 10 seconds. Three, two, one, go. All right, five goblet squats. Moderate weight for this first set. All right. Good deal. All right, we got about 45 seconds of rest. Walk around, grab a drink of water. Your all's depth look pretty good. Make sure that you're gazing forward. So pick a spot on a wall um, and that can help keep your torso more upright. All right, 20 seconds. Second set of five reps in 10 seconds. All right, three, two, one, and go. Uh, five, all right. 50 seconds. <sighs> Cannot wait to do these with the barbell on our backs. All right, 35 seconds. Go up and wait if you haven't yet. All right, we have 20 seconds of rest. Really focus on your depth with this one. Really try and get your hips below the level of your knees. All right, get a good deep squat there. All right, three, two, one, and go. Fifty five seconds rest. All right, two more sets. Two more sets. All right. Thirty seconds more rest. 
I'm probably gonna do a double kettlebell squat for this one. We will probably learn how to do this in class at some point, but you have to clean both the kettlebells up to that goblet position. That can be a tough move. For kettle or dumbbells, it's a lot easier. Okay, five seconds, this is set four. All right, 50 seconds, rest. One more set. This last set's gonna be max reps. All right. All right, 25 seconds. Keep that form, keep looking forward, hit that depth. They're we looking good, we got 10 seconds left. Oh man, these are heavy. All right, three, two, one, and go. Good work, y'all. Max reps, do as many as you're able. 45 seconds. All right. I think everyone's good there. Grab your water, walk around your house. About 30 seconds here, letting the heart rate come down. Man, a heavy goblet squat gets your heart rate up super quick. But they get you super strong. All right. Okay, so now we have our five rounds for time. Four burpees, six thrusters, 12 mountain climbers. So the only piece of equipment we need is a weight for our thrusters. Um, if you don't want to use a weight, at least use a broomstick or something like that. A uh, thruster, you want a weight in both hands. If you only have one kettlebell or one dumbbell, you can have both your hands on that and lift it up. I'll probably do that. I'll probably just use one of my kettlebells, but y'all can use two uh, kettlebells or two dumbbells. Thruster is going to be a little bit lighter of a weight because you have to press it overhead. That's the limiting factor is kind of arm strength. So the good thing is we already warmed up our squat. So now we just go work on that pressing overhead. So go ahead, we're not gonna hold on a weight right now. We're gonna go over the squat movement. Have your hands like this, like the front rack position, like if we were holding a barbell. We're gonna squat and as soon as you come up, and your hips and knees are straight, then we're gonna press overhead. Okay, let's do five air thrusters, if you will. I'm gonna squat down, come up quick, as soon as my legs get straight, yep. And that way we're transferring the power from our legs to our hands. Do five of those. Yep, good. And when, the, when you do heavy thrusters, you can tell when you try and press the weight uh, over your head too early, 
it is very, very challenging as compared to when you're really focusing on coming up quick with your legs and waiting to press until your legs are straight, then it's a whole lot easier for you to get that heavier weight overhead. All right, grab the weight that you're gonna use and let's do, let's do three thrusters. I'm gonna use this kettlebell. I'm gonna hold it by the horns like this. One, two, three. All right. All right, gonna put the weights down. So we have burpees. We got some options for burpees. A full burpee is where I get my hands on the ground. I go back, <clears throat> my feet go back, I go down into the push up, come back up, jump my feet forward, jump up. I can do this where I come down, step back, come down, and then step forward and come up. You can do that using some furniture as well. You can also just get into the top of the push-up position and then come up, something like this. Hands down, jump in that push-up position, come back up, stand up tall. You can do that on the ground or on an elevated surface like a chair or an ottoman or a couch. All right, so go ahead and do four burpees at whatever option that you feel comfortable doing However, you want these to be quick. So these should not take any more than 20, 25 seconds. So think about that. So you may wanna go with an easier option that allows you to move faster. So you do four of those. Pay attention to how long it's taking you to do. Now, four burpees took longer than 20-ish seconds, then you may want an easier option, or you may want to shorten the range of motion. When I say shorten the range of motion, you may end up just going to the push-up position, then coming up, rather than going all the way to the ground. Okay, so we got our burpees, we got our thrusters, and then we have our mountain climbers. Mountain climbers are where you're in that push-up position, and you're bringing one knee up, towards your elbow, the other knee or the other leg is straight and you're just switching them back and forth. So look like this. I'm in the push-up position. One knee is forward and I'm switching. One, two, three, four, five. Now we want you to try and switch mid-air. If that's tough, just step back, bring the other one forward. That's perfectly fine. So let's do 12 total. So end up being six on each side. If it's tough to do that from the ground, Put your hands on an elevated surface. All right. I'm going to type this out for Becky. Five rounds for time, four burpees, six thrusters. All right, so let's take just under a minute. Grab your water, make sure you got a good setup, and then we'll get rocking into this. We want this to be a sprint, five rounds, four time. All right, I'm gonna walk around a little bit, let my heart rate come down some. All right, this can be a good one. Five rounds for time, four burpees, six thrusters, 12 mountain climbers. All right, all out sprint. Any questions? Thumbs up if you're ready to rock. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna turn this music up. Get our timer going here. Let's see.
stopwatch. Okay, we'll start this in three, two, one, and go. Four burpees. Six thrusters. Six. Twelve mountain climbers. All right. 44 seconds, 45 seconds for one round. Got four more. All right. All out. This is a short workout. Go fast. All right, one minute, 30 seconds. Keep it going, two rounds in. Halfway, two minutes, 15 seconds. Got two more rounds. All right, three minutes in, and one more round. <sighs> Keep your speed up. Three fifty in. Keep it going. All the way through. All right. Keep it going. Once you're done, grab your water, walk around. Good work, y'all. Big breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. If you control your breath, that's a way to, in some, some ways, control your heart rate. Let your breath get more controlled 
and your heart rate typically will come down faster, which makes you recover quicker and makes you more ready to handle whatever you gotta do next. So that's why when we have these rest periods, you really wanna focus on that breathing, especially if we have something like, you know, five, six rounds and you end up getting 30, 45 seconds of rest, controlling your breath can help you be more prepared to go into that next round. I'm gonna do one more lap. My heart's bumping. Something else too to think about. We don't do too many workouts like that. Five, less than five minutes. Most of the things we're doing are longer. They're a grind. Whenever you see a workout like that, where you know it's not gonna take that long, that's basically the coach asking you to go as hard as you can. That you can really bump up the intensity when you do something, do a workout that you know is going to be, you know, shorter than five minutes. And that's good to do pretty often is to really ramp up that intensity. All right, enough talking. Let's, let me get these weights out of here. Let's do some stretches. All right, we're gonna start at the door frame first. We're gonna put our right shoulder into that frame step back with your right foot keep your heel down knee is straight we're still focusing on our breath if you're like me your heart's still racing all right now bend that back knee so we get what we call the soleus muscle it's a deep calf muscle. Probably feel that stretch change a little bit. Okay, let's switch it. So left foot goes back. Your knee straight, heels going down to the ground. Okay, go ahead, bend that knee. Still trying to drive that heel down to the ground. But your, your heel's gonna pop off the ground unless you have crazy flexible ankles. Good, all right. Now we're gonna do our quad stretch. We did this yesterday. Um, <clears throat> gee, your sister's not there, so you may have to hold on to a door frame. <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw that. G and, and Galen, they just kind of held on to each other whenever we did this stretch. It was, it was pretty cool. But you're just going to hold on for support. You can challenge yourself to make it a balance exercise if you want. But I'm going to grab that foot. Now, what I want you to focus on here is I can do this stretch and I can lean my back backwards and feel like I'm getting a good stretch, but I don't want to do that. I want to really target this stretch to the front of my hip so don't let your back arch. Keep your back nice and straight. Don't let that position change. And then you can try and bring that leg a little further back. And you should feel it right in that hip in the front of the thigh. I could get my leg further back, but I'd end up arching my back. So I'm not stretching that area I want to stretch. So my back is staying in the same position as I'm trying to get that leg back. All right, let's go ahead and switch it. It's a really tough stretch. Good, all right, let's do some Michael Phelps flaps. Hug yourself, let's do 20. Ten, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, wide stance. All right, let's take both hands, reach down to your right ankle. Try and keep your knees straight. It's going to get more of a stretch. All right, come up, both hands down in the middle. Then to both hands to the left. Good, all right, now keep that stance, hands together, legs don't move, head doesn't move, but you're twisting your torso, almost pretend like you're elbowing someone in the face behind you, just think of someone you don't like. Uh, I've got a couple that come to mind, this is passive aggressiveness at its finest here. Rotate, pretend <laughs> like you're shooting your elbows back behind you, tail on each side, Good, all right. I love that one. It gets some good rotation through your thoracic spine or your mid back. All right, y'all. Man, that was a very quick workout at the end of that Metcon, but man, the ability to go up in intensity uh, is, is very valuable. So even though it may seem short, uh, that was a really good stimulus. So that was, that was a good one. No announcements, uh, still have not, you know, given have not been given the green light to be inside the gym so we're still on for our friday outside class it's gonna be a little warmer than it was on on monday but it should be uh still be a good time if we hear any news if that changes we'll let you know uh but we're still going to be outside for friday if you all have any friends family uh the the you want to invite you're more than welcome to do so it's been awesome uh meeting g's and get the sister galen uh, and then Linda came on Monday and she joined. So she's a member now. So she'll be there on Friday. So that was really encouraging uh, to see. So we're growing, which Jeff and I are very excited about. I'm sure you all are excited as well. We'll keep that train going. Otherwise, y'all have a lovely Tuesday and I'll talk with you soon. See y'all.